folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, as I continue to review some Christmas movies and specials in December this year, since I also reviewed the Polar Express yesterday, I do want to mention one scene that I forgot to do so, but, but it definitely leads to what I'm going to be reviewing today. There was a scene where the conductor, played by Tom Hanks, who brought in Hero Boy and Hero Girl, you know, going to the next compartment of the Polar Express, where we begin to spot abandoned toys that were all set, being ready to be repaired, and hopefully they'll come to life. Somehow we begin to spot a puppet of, you wouldn't believe it, Ebenezer Scrooge that's being controlled by the Drifter. And that was a creepy scene that pretty much did kind of scare some kids around when they saw that. I mean, the Drifter is basically scaring a hero boy around, along with all the other puppets joining it by. So, now that I got that off, I'm finally going to be reviewing Robert Zemeckis' second Christmas film with Jim Carrey playing the role of Ebenezer Scrooge, and he also plays multiple roles too. A Christmas Carol. Yet based upon the Charles Dickens uh, classic novel, as we all know and love, uh, this time, you know, Robert Zemeckis had teamed up with Disney to provide a joint venture called Fruits Production Company, Image Movers, simply called Image Movers Digital, which means that this was going to be his next big thing to release several 3D motion capture CGI animation of several movies that he's working on at the time. So this was going to be the first film to do so. If this becomes a big hit, then he's going to continue to do some more works. But sadly, this film didn't quite do as big as the Polar Express and even Monster House that he produced. But that was directed by Gail Keenan, by the way, that he was hoping for. And I know he worked on those films uh, through Sony Image Works, so this would actually spread across to do his own. But yeah, I mean, it, it actually made $325 million out of its budget of at around 175 through 200 million uh, worldwide and that was the original budget that they worked on for this movie you know where they did it in the studio they had all the actors perform you know wearing all these suits and putting all these dots on their faces and they're doing all their body language body movements and all and also making all these facial expressions to see how it, it reacts and how it performs this way. I wish it had became a bigger hit if it wasn't for the free films that eventually took its place. You guessed it, folks. 2012 or 2012, whatever you say it. Twilight Saga, New Moon, and even Paranormal Activity, which eventually became the worst horror franchise. But at least the first movie, in my opinion, was a lot better than all the rest of them that follows. Except for that stupid ending that they changed, which I'll stick to the original ending, thank you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And also because of the scheduling conflicts that Disney had at the time. You know, remember they had the focus on their Hannah Montana and their Jonas Brothers coming around during those months that causes several of the movies that were supposed to come out during those months winds up in probably the worst months like they had to release um, Old Dogs uh, in November on Thanksgiving weekend instead of The Princess and the Frog which that's what it should have been but they only had to release it as a screening and they had to put it in December just before Avatar came along and that was a huge hit of them all yeah, no kidding. I mean, they could have just thought of a better idea to schedule their films. But I guess they were really struggling. Yeah. What can you do? 
and sadly there were many uh, layoffs of employees around and they were going about to do their next movie which turned out to be Mars Need Moms and that became a big flop it turned out to be one of the worst films of 2011 so yes the company had been shut down and that's when they decided to move to Universal Pictures and they went reverted back to Image Movers so that's how Semeckis just continues to do some more of his other films that's not focusing on animation but I know he's probably going to work on his next projects I heard he's going to work on the new uh, Pinocchio movie that will come out next year uh, so let's see how that one will turn out um, anyway now this blu-ray it comes with a DVD and I'm just going to show you um, yeah there's a code in there from Disney Movie Rewards which is now Insiders but I, I'm not going to use it yet uh, I know it's kind of a little messed up but here's the blu-ray um, and here's uh, the DVD as well and gray. Okay. And it does come with features. Uh, it has uh, behind the carol, the full motion capture experience, which yeah, it's a feature red, which shows you know the rest of the actors portraying the roles. They even had the revealing feature length picture and picture viewing, so you probably get to see it. Uh, I guess they said it that way. One of those picture and picture. Um, special features. Uh, countdown to Christmas interactive calendar. Yeah, 25 days of holiday surprises. And yes, they have all the other DVD bonus features that's included here, such as capturing Dickens, a novel retelling, the journey through the creative process and see how this time traveling holiday ghost stories came to life. Yeah, that's how it said it. On set with Sammy a kid's eye view of anything but average day and deleted scenes so, all included <laughs> yeah right there yeah and another reason why it didn't perform very well as it seems I mean before he did this though he, he was also had another film called Bear Wolf which was released by Paramount uh, with Warner Brothers uh, given the international rights and I know he had struggled a lot on that film because you know he was trying to recreate from the poem as it's told for this warrior um, it underperformed because it came out during the holiday season in November with a lot of films coming around so that's true but it did became a hit for a little while at number one but it, but they could have had recuperate some more for the rest of it. So, a Christmas Carol had suffered the same problem too. But it did have some very stunning animation, all motion capture, and they they really provided the performances very well, including Jim Carrey playing multiple roles. So not only did he play Scrooge, but he also plays the ghosts of Christmas past and present and maybe even more characters to follow <laughs> because I knew I had to recognize his face and the fact that he portrayed these roles uh, quite differently because I almost couldn't recognize uh, his voice but it was very distinctive how he did it but of course it's trying to go for the spirit of of the story and he also got other actors to join in, like uh, Bob Hoskins, uh, Colin Firth, uh, Gary Oldman, Robert Wright Penn, come to mind. It's funny because both Carrie Elves and Robert Wright Penn uh, were previously in The Princess Bride, so this is might be the first time they finally got to be in, in a film together. But they're working to provide with all the others. And yeah, they even started to play this in theaters uh, using digital 3D for Disney and IMAX 3D, so it will give you the spirit. Um, of course, it got criticized when it came out. I mean, even though they praised their performances and with the musical score by 
Ounce of Bestry, and some of the songs that they had, and the visuals, and, and how stunning it looks. Uh, they criticize it mostly for its dark tone. But you know what? Every version of A Christmas Carol has a dark tone in it. So it's going to happen anyway. But I guess I can see why some scenes could basically scare a lot of kids around. And I know, I mean, maybe at that age, too. But once you get used to it, I, I think that will be the case. It was also the third adaptation of the classic story, uh, joining in with Mickey's Christmas Carol, another classic from Disney, and of course, The Muppet Christmas Carol, which is another favorite, uh, joining in with Scrooge, uh, with Albert Finney, but this version had uh, Michael Caine playing the role, but joining in with the Muppets, <laughs> you know, Kermit the Frog, Fozzie the Bear, um, as well as uh, Gonzo, Brad and Miss Piggy, <laughs> you name it, those characters. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, uh, let's begin. Stars Jim Carrey, Gary Oldman, Harlan Firth, Bob Hoskins, from Who Framed Roger Rabbit, who's no longer with us, Sally, yeah. Barbara Wright Penn, Carrie Elves, Vanula Flanagan, Steve Ballantyne, Daryl Sabara, Sage Ryan, Amber Ganey Mead, Ryan Ocal, Bobby Page, Sammy Hanratty, Julian Holloway, Lizzie Manville, Molly C. Quinn, Faye Manderson, and Paul Blackthorne. Based upon A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens, and it's written and directed by Robert Zemeckis. Who of course, gave us Back to the Future, The Polar Express, Forrest Gump, Cast Away, The Lies Beneath, and Death Becomes Her, and all these other films. The movie begins, set in London in 1836. We meet an old, miserly, and surely Ebenezer Scrooge, who's played by Jim Carrey, of course, who just found out that his business partner that they have worked together for years, named Jacob Marley, had passed away on Christmas Eve. He just signed a death certificate, and he already had stole the two coins which he actually had spent on the funeral parlor. So they're ready to um, board him up inside the coffin, ready to be taken away to be buried uh, in the cemetery. Seven years have passed on Christmas Eve, where now Scrooge is already working with his employee Bob Pratchett, who's played by Gary Oldman, to take his place. And since then, Scrooge had refused to partake in the Merry Men of Christmas, declining his cheerful nephew Fred, played by Carlin Firth, as an invitation to the annual Christmas dinner party. And worse yet, he actually rejected two gentlemen's offer to donate money for charity. So, Bob had asked Scrooge to give him a day off on Christmas Day so he could spend more time with the family. He reluctantly agrees. And then that night, Scrooge encounters the ghost of Jacob Marley, which he spotted him on the door knocker inside his mansion. So now, when he went inside, you know, trying to keep himself warm in the fireplace, you know, grabbing some hot cocoa or soup, I think, and then suddenly Marley appears, bound in chains, and he actually warns Scrooge to change his wicked ways or he'll be condemned by his worst faith. Yes, and the way we spotted uh, Marley is you already know that he's already becoming like a zombie type. He's already dying as, well, I mean, since he's already a ghost, you can see that his jaw is already ready to break. So he even had trouble trying to move it around when he was scaring him. So he, he tends to fix it. <laughs> 
So he kind of got stuck until he finally uh, got completed. <laughs> uh, anyway, he informs Scrooge that he will be haunted by free spirits. Yes, the ghosts of Christmas past, the ghosts of Christmas present, and the ghosts of Christmas future. All which are portrayed by Carrie, <laughs> of course. So first, Scrooge is being visited by the uncanny Ghost of Christmas Pass, who unfortunately is like a flame. He takes him back in time. Already he can fly because he gave him that particular magic dust. Just showing his, um, his lonely childhood days uh, in the boarding school. And then later we begin to show his beloved sister, Fan, who's played by Robert Wright Penn who will soon become Fred's future mother and his relationship with her but that didn't last then he later began a successful career in business and money lending for an employee of, of his boss uh, Fezzerwig who's played by Bob Hoskins who's very cheerful and kind and, and gentle and all and he also had been engaged to a beautiful woman named Bell, also played by Robert Wright Penn. However, the ghost shows uh, Scrooge how Bell left him because he was mostly focusing on his wealth and greed that he suddenly had changed. So he never met Bell ever again, and he just didn't want to see this moment happening. So they left him pretty devastated and distinguished the spirit with the candle snuffer cap and that's where it's, he starts to shoot off like, like a rocket had just launched and it, and it just launched him up in the air until the sparks uh, came out and now he's like flying around and falling all the way down. It's like he's flying over the moon and he landed directly into the pavement until he's finally in the present day inside his bedroom. So next he gets to meet the jolly Ghost of Christmas present who shows the joys of Christmas by ex yeah and he's he's basically this one giant fellow who's just has this long red fizzled beard and hair he has a cap wears a a coat and he has this uh, candle uh, horn uh, torch that he has yeah who moves it around and all and tons of uh, Christmas gifts and feast and all around, yeah. So it just takes him here by grabbing the rope, and it starts to fly around all the way through the present time of London. So you get to see all these rooftops and the the church and everywhere, all these buildings around, and it goes directly into uh, Fred's house. Where, yeah, they were playing some charade game. You know, this is where they mentioned about Ebenezer Scrooge, why he wasn't there. And I know that was uh, later on. But not only that, but we do get to see um, Bob Pritchett's family. Yeah, he has a lovely family, but unfortunately, they're very poor and very depressed because, unfortunately, at least they're having a good, jolly old Christmas together. Because families is what matters the most, especially with his son, Tiny Tim, who's very ill. And we're not so sure if he'll be able to live within the next Christmas. And that's how Scrooge begins to find out about that. So then the ghost slowly begins to age. And then, and of course, we did meet Fred again with the Christmas party and, and all. And they criticize him, telling them you know that it shows about how ignorant he really is so and how bitter cold he really is so arriving in Big Ben the ghosts have warned Scrooge that the evils of, of ignorance and wants will actually told by midnight that will make which at this rate we get to see the two wretched children who suddenly grows completely violent and insane underneath the, the coat and then at this point on he starts to turn into a skeleton yeah he was already dying as we know it while laughing 
Oh, that was a creepy scene. And that's where we get to see the ghost of Christmas future. And he arrives like the Grim Reaper. And then he suddenly appears uh, riding around on the coach. Yeah, with all these uh, black horses and just chasing him around throughout the entire streets of London. He suddenly shrunk because of the magical dust. And he wants to go in near the, the tunnels. He starts to escape as fast as he can. Then he wants to get knocked down by all these icicles. And starts to s slid around with this one icicle. And then he just goes around, you know, falling, getting hurt and, and all. <laughs> bouncing around. And then we get to meet, uh, even though, yes, the, the ghost of Christmas future has a dark shadow and all. We get to see um, his chairwoman, Mrs. Dilbert, who's been selling the stolen possessions of the deceased. They begin to explain about the death of, of one person, and it kind of leads to what was going to happen next, when he's going to find out that that it might turn out to be him and it was because now he began he begins to see what happens to tiny Tim that he passed away leaving the Bob Critchett and the rest of the family heartbroken and now that's where we lead to the cemetery where we begin to spot his grave yeah, of Ebenezer Scrooge so now he's going to be going all the way down into the coffin and then he's starting to pray that he'll be able to change his, his nasty ways so he finally woke up and it's now Christmas Day. So now he finally became <laughs> very good old jolly uh, Ebenezer Scrooge but now he's finally doing everything to help all the poor families and everyone involved that he forgot to do so on Christmas Eve so now he can finally get to go to uh, Fred's Christmas parties to celebrate and have a nice delicious Christmas feast and then the next when Marley when uh, Bob finally came back well Scrooge is already continuing uh, working and with him, he's begin to show up at 16 minutes late, but he knows that he's going to try to help him out for, for for Bob's family. And now, at this point on, <laughs> and yes, we do get to see Bob uh, breaking the fourth wall. We now get to see Scrooge finally changing his old ways, and now he's going to stay merrily forever. And now he gets to hang around with Tiny Tim and, and all the rest of, of the townspeople in London. Yeah. <sighs> Wonderful story. <laughs> and well told uh, by uh, Semeckis' point of view, because he, he really captures the spirit very well um, with all the stunning CGI motion capture scenes around. Yes, there are a lot of dark scenes here and there that are very creepy, but then there's a lot of funny moments in this movie too. I mean, thanks to Jim Carrey because he really provided his excellent performance, uh, portraying multiple roles of any character, and he really brought it to life. I mean, he knew he really enjoyed this because, of course, you know, he, he, this was something that he never thought he would ever do. And as you may know, because this was Jim Carrey's second Christmas movie after The Grinch. <laughs> so if he can play the Grinch, then he can play Scrooge. No doubt about it. <laughs> I love that. And I love all the other actors uh, portraying their roles as well. I mean, it's great to see Bob Hoskins. I mean, it's sad that he's no longer with us, but when he was alive, you know, he was terrific. And we got to see other actors like Robert Wright Penn, Kerry Elves, um, as well as uh, Gary Oldman and, and Carl Firth. Uh, portraying their roles exactly how they are and I know there are a lot of funny scenes too where even when he finally uh, changed his old ways uh, there was I never forget the moment when he was when he finally met Mrs. Dilbert. Scrooge's maid by the way 
trying to clean up the whole entire place and then, and then she's all scared and she thinks that <laughs> that he just became deranged like he was ready to kill her or something <laughs> I don't know, it's just crazy crazy scene they really did show a lot of um, tender moments a lot of um, heartwarming and and very um, incredible scenes here that really um, brought it to life for the story and how we really care I, I just really love it and plus you know it blends in with time travel and stuff I, I love how they threw this in because it goes to show exactly what was happening Bah humbug <laughs> yeah as Ebenezer Scrooge would always say <laughs> okay but of course Tiny Tim will always say God bless us everyone <laughs> all right uh, but going back to the performances, yeah, they had to perform them using English and Irish accents. I mean, for Jim Carrey's sake, I mean, you can hardly recognize him at times when he's doing providing the voice, just using a blend of English and Irish. But also the rest of the other actors, I mean, they sound pretty familiar, as you can see. And they actually provided to use all their body movements and all and the facial expressions and everything and they probably used some other stunt coordinators you know for other people doing their own but they really captured that and it has a wonderful soundtrack uh, once again with Alan Silvestri's uh, great score providing each and every theme we also have a song by composer and um, cellist Andrea uh, Bocelli, he did his uh, song called, which is based upon Tiny Tim's uh, theme, God Blesses Everyone. Uh, very enjoyable. And I did saw this movie in theaters uh, as a second run uh, on Christmas Day in 2009 because uh, they weren't playing it anywhere as far as I'm concerned, although I think some theaters were still playing it. At least they were lucky, because that's why it was doing quite as huge as they were hoping for. But we did get to see it at the Academy Six, uh, which was, of course, operated by Regency Theaters, still operating today, as we know it. Just showing some more second-run movies, especially the ones that came out in theaters, and I think they're also playing ones that just came out of streaming, <laughs> just in case. But there you go. But yeah, um, definitely buy the Blu-ray and DVD. It's not on 4K. Hopefully they will put it on 4K someday. I'm surprised they haven't done that yet either. Um, but nevertheless, they also have it on Disney Plus. You can watch it anytime. So just check out this beloved classic done in this format. So that's a Christmas Carol. Jim Carrey and from Robert Zemeckis and I give the movie five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora and I'll see you later. Bye.